Hello and welcome everybody. Today we have a look at a South African junior athlete, 18 years old, Mitch Fuzzle, his name. Hey Mitch, I hope I pronounce your last name correctly. Mitch started to skull, the single skull, in March, had to take a six month break, and now last month he sent me the video. You what, a beginner? No way. This technique is super refined. And Mitch, the way you row is just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But all my athletes know that I don't really care if you're a beginner or not. I treat everybody the same, masters, Olympic athlete, junior, whatever. Standards are always the same and high. So the question is, how can Mitch become better? And there are a couple things that, that are pretty obvious. The first thing, if you start to analyze something, um, advice from just from my experience have a look at the finish this is one of the nice indicators and you want to just look at the way the blade leaves the water this is one thing so there's a bit of a washout and you would say well no real washout but it's enough to be an indicator and I will later explain why this is an indicator second indicator I'm looking for is the body moving empty or not no it's not the third indicator I'm looking for is is the upper body stopping at an irrational early point of time? Um, not really. The arms are working a bit alone at the finish, but that's all right. There are two philosophies. The first philosophy is and say, okay, um, I'm going to move my upper body along with my arms at the finish. Uh, that's all right. But in a single, as the overall boat speed in a single is relatively low, you can actually go for um, finishing the upper body slightly ahead of the arms and the arms just get the wrist done a bit. So the finishes are right, a little indicator. Another indicator here is the way the blade moves at the catch. Is there a bit of a wave, a hello wave with the blade? And uh, yes, there is. And the final indicator that is very important for me, look at the seat. Let me draw something nice here so you all know what I mean. Uh, if the seat right there and the the boat travel, and what the blade does. So these three elements, let's see how these are coordinated. So the seat stops to move, the boat still travels, and the blade does a lot of vertical travel, and the seat simply has to wait until the blade is ready. And usually, athletes are not patient enough to have the seat wait long enough. So what they do is just start to drive, just get on with it and the blade will eventually struggle its way into the water. And the result is usually super deep catch. And this is not what I want in, in my coaching philosophy. In the last video drill, I explained why. This is for me one of the most important indicators. So if something is like this at the catch, you know the preparation isn't right. This is nothing you can change at the catch. It's almost impossible to do this. It is possible if you reduce all the forces traveling through the body, basically means no power for a brief moment of time. This is not what you want to do with the drive. So the question is, how do you get rid of exactly this pause of the seat and unnecessary blade travel? Well, you could say, good, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to bring my blade closer to the water. Yes, but how? How do you do that? And this is the answer. This is exactly what I'm trying to answer here. Let's see where it all starts. As usual, things start, in my humble opinion, at the finish. So let's, let's say rowing starts right there, a new stroke. How does Mitch prepare his stroke? First up, hands move forward and you immediately see the shoulders follow along. That's very good because arms are not fully extended. They're, they're, they're still bent and the shoulders move along and that moving along of the shoulders is very, very good. Let's watch what the lower back here is doing. Is it following along? Does he actively prepare the lower spine, the trunk or not? Because what I want is loose shoulders following the forearms and elbows. But at the same time, I do want preparation of the lower spine. That's very important. Moves forward. Yeah, absolutely. There is a pivot. Um, one thing I found to be almost a rule of thumb. All right, if you see that the upper body is not quite in the forward lean angle, it should have at the catch, but you see the legs are already bent, which means nothing else but losing tension in the hamstrings and therefore losing control over the boat. Then as a rule of thumb, you know the catch is going to be messed up in some way. Let me repeat that. 
if you find that the upper body is not quite in its forward lean position, which means the forward lean angle you're going to have at the catch, at a point of time where the legs already start to give in and bend and you lose tension here in the hamstrings and the hip extension chain, then you know something's going to be messed up at the catch. And just before we found out something doesn't work 100% at the catch. And again, I don't strive for it looks okay, just keep on rowing. I strive for perfection. I don't make a difference in my training planning, in my approach, in, my, in, in, in the way I treat you. If you are one of my Olympic candidates, uh, world championship athletes, masters athletes, just started to row and has big goals. It's always the same standard. Either you are an athlete or you're not an athlete. Doesn't mean you have to train 100 times a week, but it means that whatever you do, I strive for the best you can possibly achieve. And what Mitch can possibly achieve is already super high standard technique. This is why I'm talking about these things. All right, Mitch. So we found out, okay, something's messed up here. You bend your legs a bit too early. This by itself, and there's a caveat, this by itself does not mean that you will not get the catch right. There's still a way that you distribute your body weight onto your seat all the way forward. So you will find athletes who do bend their knees a bit early. However, they will not have the same boat control as athletes who keep the tension in the hip extension chain and in the hamstrings long enough to control the boat because once they, they bend their knees, they can actually start to pull the boat underneath themselves towards the finish line, towards direction of travel. And Mitch, I think this is one of the problems you have. So far, so good. Let's just follow that stroke a bit more. You move on, you move on, and at this point of the stroke, I see you start to tighten up a bit. Um, it looks, it, it may look super, super well executed, but if you look precisely, and if you look at a lot of rowers, you find that right there, there's a bit of tension that shouldn't be here. And what I'm looking for, and this is what you have to understand, at the catch, what we want to do is pull on something, right? Okay. And you can have precisely two ways of tensioning your muscles. I mean, the three. You can tighten up, you can push, or you can pull. And we want to get the tension right for pulling. And just try something very simple. You know, push a door and then try to pull it. And just see how long it takes you to reverse muscle activity. That's a different thing. And that's the problem a lot of you athletes have at the catch. At the catch, you're still pushing your blades forward at a point of time where you actually have to prepare your arms for a pull. But you're not ready for a pull. You're not, because you're still in that push mode. And this is what makes the catch take so long. It's simple muscle preparation. And this is why this type of tightening up and tension is not good. In other words, you could also say that Mitch has a bit too much weight on the hands because he pushes forward. Well, let's see. Let's see how this evolves at the catch. Yeah, now he's loosening up a bit. That's all right. However, Mitch, one big thing. See here at the catch, your upper torso, everything below the shoulders all the way, probably around where your heart rate belt is. This is a bit too weak here. So you fall a bit onto your knees, but just with the upper torso. What I recommend is to keep the loose shoulders, maybe for practice, don't fully extend your arms at that point after recovery. Try to move out, not forward. You row a bit, you row a bit the erg, but the erg doesn't have anything to do with, with the true motion in the boat. You have to move out. And that moving out is supported by you opening up here the rib cage just a bit. You shouldn't sit like Hercules at the catch and say, I'm just kill it all. You have to stay flexible in the shoulders. So what you do is just open up the rib cage ever so slightly, move to the side, spread your wings. And I mean, I'm, I'm talking to somebody who has barely rolled the single, but nevertheless, standard high, all right. And now as you move forward, yeah, now you gotta make sure that you control the blade. As you still had a lot of body weight at that point of the recovery on your oar handles, your blades were too low. You see this right there? This is not enough clearance to the water. You need more because, and, and because you need space. 
you need space to square. And it's not so much the blade. What is interesting for me is the shaft because the shaft is gonna be the center of rotation. So you need one and a half blade heights, the clearance between the shaft and the water. And it is not given. I mean, that water you have there is just, South Africa is so beautiful. But nevertheless, it is not enough. What if there are waves? What if the water is choppy? That would mean that the ever so slight waves will offset your single. And this is what I see with a lot of you athletes out there. Give it a bit of wind, a bit of waves, and oof, I, I, can't really, I can't really perform as well. No, no, that's an excuse. You have to be better than that. And I see a lot of single scholars just goofing off with the blade work. It's just, yeah, flat water anyway, and blade work is just cosmetics and look good. No, no, no. This is the essence of good rowing. If you can't get the blade work up to perfection, it isn't going to be a fast single or a double or an eight. Blade work is not cosmetics. Blade work is the essence of body preparation. I think this is what many athletes underestimate. And I can't, I can't repeat this enough. Now on the way forward, now you have to get the blade off the water. How do you get your blade off the water here? You have to, get, you have to do exactly what is not good. You have to push down. And that's the wrong tension in the muscles here. And this is what makes you take so long. And now that story, you know, that circle closes in. And this is exactly why that seed just doesn't move. First up, the blades are too high off the water. And secondly, you have to reverse the way your muscles are now prepared. So they are prepared for a pull. And it takes time. And the thing is, it, for the muscles, it doesn't matter if it's a stroke rate 16, 12, 14, 22, 34, or 40. It always takes the same time. So the higher the stroke rate is, the more problems you will have. It's as simple as that. Well, this is one of the keys why some athletes perform well uh, at high stroke rates and some don't. It's as simple as that. So when you move forward, now you start to drive with the blades entering the water the blades into the water with the drive. And this is why your blades go a bit too deep. So a quarter of that shaft is, is below the water surface, but you still hang on to that nicely. What saves you, Mitch, and this is drop dead gorgeous. This is super, super beautiful. The way you relax the shoulders. And I want you all to have a good look at that. This is, this is super well executed. This hang, make a screenshot. Um, and use it as your wallpaper on your phone or on, on your PC and your iMac, whatever you have. The way you hang is perfect. It's a hook grip, relaxed shoulders, not like dislocated shoulders, but relaxed shoulders. That's good. And this is what makes you as efficient as you are. However, let's come back to the inefficiencies. The last byproduct I want to mention of your inefficient preparation um, of the catch and the catch itself then is that here you don't have as effective of a pivot as you could have. Your pivot right there it doesn't have to punch. It could have because you start with a slight upper body pivot. With some strokes, it's not always the same. Your technique changes from stroke to stroke. Sometimes you open up your upper body here, all right? Then you lose simply body motion capacity. And sometimes, and this is what you do here, you simply reduce leg power there, and then you start to drive more when your body has repositioned. This is barely visible. You only see this when you do a lot of video analysis in comparison with force curves on the Bayroa. And, and this is where I learned most of the stuff I'm talking about today. If you just see a lot of athletes or you row yourself on a bi row, see yourself um, on a screen with a cam from the side, this is the best way to, to learn how to move a boat effectively and how to use your body the most effective way. For the rest, Mitch, yeah, chapeau. Well done. Well done. If this is how you start to scull, I'll be happy to see more of you in, in, in 12 months down the line. Good. If you want to join the weekly live in the rowing sessions, go to rmtraining.com. This is where we do a lot of live video analysis training. All right. And if you want to work with me, get your individual training plan. Go to rmtraining.com and prepare on time for season 2021, which is going to be a fiery one. All right. For the rest, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know. 
let me know in the comments what do you think support my work on patreon i put the link right in the description below and now i'm done i wish you all the best looking forward to see you all in the next video bye bye